Hi, everybody. It is your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today, we are getting into the first of our four different videos on our four main groups of biological macromolecules. So 1.4 is on carbohydrates. Ooh, carbohydrates. Uh, you, they might, they kind of get a bad rap, an undeserved bad rap, in my opinion, um, because I think they're super important, but uh, you may have heard a whole lot about diets that uh, you want to avoid carbohydrates as much as you possibly can. Um, and while, you know, this is an AP Biology video, and I'm, I'm not going to get too much into the, you know, semantics of uh, different types of diets and that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm just going to give you the basics of what carbohydrates are as per uh, college board tells me to do with the AP biology curriculum and prepare you for the 2025, 2026 AP biology exam. So let's get started. I mean, maybe you can learn a little bit more about this and then form your own opinion about whether carbs should be in your diet or not. But here they are. Carbohydrates are organic molecules characterized by carbon atoms bonded to OH and H. Um, they are also what's known as sugars, okay? So sugars and carbohydrates, those two terms are uh, pretty much interchangeable. And you're thinking, wait, like bread and pasta and like uh, potatoes and all that are containing sugars? Yeah, okay, carbohydrates are sugars. Um, and we're gonna be able to tell the difference and know what the significant differences are between them, uh, hopefully by the end of this video, okay? Uh, you can call carbohydrates, well, they're so named because think about it, carbo means carbon, hydrate, oh, there's another prefix, it means water, again, um, carbohydrates are generally, you know, characterized by having a carbon atom bounded to oxygen and hydrogen, sometimes a hydroxyl and an oxygen. Take a look at uh, my friend glucose here over here, D-glucose. It's carbon bound to hydrogen and OH. Carbon, hydrogen, OH, same thing all the way down. Um, so that's what typically carbohydrates are known for, okay? They're primarily made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, as we spoke about in, not primarily, they're only made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, as we spoke about in uh, 1.2. And they are used for fuel, for cellular energy, and for, uh, in some instances, structure. And we're gonna look at some examples of both here. Okay, uh, some of the main terms to know here is that uh, the monomer, what we talked about monomers and polymers in our last video, monomers are linked together to form polymers. Um, monomers of carbohydrates are what are known as monosaccharides. Mono, once again, meaning one. Saccar or saccharide meaning sweet. Uh, so monomers of carbohydrates, aka what are called simple sugars, if you've ever heard of those before. Um, so simple sugars include this one right here that's going to be mega important um, for the rest of time. It's called glucose. Um, that's going to be coming up a lot more in this class. Just just wait for it. Okay. Um, but glucose is an example of a monosaccharide. Uh, fructose, if you've ever heard of that before, is an example of a monosaccharide. So if you know high fructose corn syrup. Maybe you've heard that in that concept, context before. Um, that's another example of a monosaccharide. That is a monomer of a more complex carbohydrate. Um, monosaccharides can either be linear, they can fo form this kind of shape where the carbons are lined up in a, well, a straight line, or they can form this cyclic shape over here where they form this pentagon or hexagon shape. Um, in some cases, say, so they can be cyclic like this and form a cycle, or they can be linear. And the thing is about these simple sugars is that they taste sweet. Um, so glucose and fructose are examples of monosaccharides that are sweet tasting. Um, but this is beyond the scope of the AP exam, but disaccharides that are made of two monosaccharides, like say, for example, sucrose or maltose, those are also some relatively sweet tasting sugars. Um, not relatively, they are sweet tasting sugars. Um, but glucose is going to be this mega, mega important monosaccharide that we're going to be talking about a lot in this class. Um, it's made of six carb six carbons, um, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. And it's, uh, these are two different conformations of that same molecule. Um, it's going to come back in a big way here. Monosaccharides are linked by covalent bonds through dehydration synthesis. That's what we talked about. From um, and they form polysaccharides, poly meaning many, saccharide meaning sweet, again, polysaccharides. Um, and those are what are known as complex sugars, okay? So, or complex carbohydrates. So if these are simple sugars, these are complex carbs. Um, and polysaccharides are normally what you think of as carbs when you eat carbs. Um, there's actually one carbohydrate in particular that comes to mind um, more than the others. Okay, but polysaccharides, once again, are a long, long chains of these monosaccharides. And these long, long chains can form a straight line, hence being linear once again. Um, so check it out. Here's a linear 
polysaccharide right up here. There's uh, covalent bonds forming between them. Uh, and they are forming a line, or they can be branched. Um, so this is clearly not a straight line. There are branches coming off of this straight line, um, and polysaccharides can come in both of those different conformations. We're going to look at a few examples here um, that are going to be important and are going to come up later again in the, uh, in the AP Biology curriculum. One of those is cellulose. Cellulose is a linear polysaccharide, which means the uh, glucoses that make up cellulose are just in a straight line. Um, and these form plant cell walls. And plant cell walls are going to become very important in unit two. Okay, but something you ought to know about plant cells right now is that plant cells have cell walls, while animal cells like our cells do not. Okay, and here's a picture of a cell wall right over here. So here's all the inside, or here would be all the inside contents of the, the plant cell, the nucleus, mitochondria, chloroplasts, all that biz. Uh, but then here's the cell wall all around the outside, okay, that even um, goes further out than the uh, than the plasma membrane. Okay, cellulose is actually an important part of dietary fiber. So if you've ever looked at a nutrition label before, you're going to see a category, a bold category that says carbohydrates, and then you might see sugars underneath of it. Um, sugars would be like your glucose, fructose, etc. Um, but then there's also a subcategory in some foods where it says dietary fiber. Um, and dietary fiber is the part of the carbs that your body can't really break down, um, but it's important for digestive function and moving your food through your you know, through your GI tract, you know, making sure everything goes through properly if you, if you catch my drift. Uh, but anyway, cellulose is an important part of that. It's uh, indigestible by animals. It means uh, we can't really hydrolyze the bonds that, uh, that form between the glucoses in cellulose. They are a special type of beta bond um, that are going to be used for dietary fiber. So that's uh, dietary fiber is basically the carbs that your, your body can't break down that helps you move things along. And cellulose is a big part of that. Also makes uh, plant cell walls. That's the important part. Um, and then starch, this is, uh, this is the big one here. Uh, when you think of carbs, starch is the, the number one. Oh, it's got so many carbs. Yeah, it's got a lot of starch in it. Um, and starch is basically the energy storage molecule. All right, it's linking up a bunch of glucoses together um, for a plant's energy storage. Um, so as I said here, linear or branch polysaccharide comprised of many glucose molecules found in plants, and it's used for energy storage. Okay, so if you, uh, so in wheat, in potatoes, in corn, whatever, all the carbs Herbs that you're getting from all of those products is usually in the form of starch. Um, and that is a whole bunch of glucoses linked up into long chains. Um, and this is obviously a form of uh, poly polysaccharide that we can break down. Um, and this is where we get a lot of our, in our modern diet, this is where we get a lot of our glucose from, is from eating starch. Um, yeah, so and it's an energy storage molecule. But the energy storage molecule, uh, polysaccharide in animals, and fungi and some types of bacteria is called glycogen and it is highly highly branched um it's very very complicated branched um and this is how animals including ourselves store glucose for energy in our muscles and in our liver as well all right so i have a distance running background i am a cross-country coach i am a former uh college track and cross-country athlete and something that we did a lot was form do what are called carbo crams um where we'd eat a whole bunch of starch uh, before a race so that we our bodies could break down that starch and re-put it back together, uh, reassemble it, rebuild it through dehydration synthesis um, into glycogen. And your glycogen is then stored in your muscles um, so that when you when it's when it's race time and it's time to go, uh, your muscles have a wide um, they have a deep pool of glycogen, a deep source of glycogen um, to tap into and use for glucose when you need energy to get ready to race. I'll talk about that more um, in unit three. But anyway, glycogen is how you how you store your glucose, um, and that's in your liver and your muscles, and it's a branched polysaccharide. Okay, so just a recap one, once again here, just in case I missed anything, in case you need it written down. Uh, carbohydrates are made from carbon and hydrogen and oxygen, and they are used for energy, and they're used for structure. Uh, monosaccharides are the monomers that, when linked together with covalent bonds, form polysaccharides. Okay, so monosaccharides are your simple sugars again. Polysaccharides are your complex carbs. Um, then those complex carbs can be branched or linear, um, and they are long chains of monosaccharides. And three examples um, that you should probably be familiar with are cellulose, which forms plant cell wall starch, which is the glucose storage energy molecule for uh, plants, and then glycogen, which is the st glucose storage molecule for animals. Um, and that's what we have. All right, that should be it for this video. We're going to get into protein. Just kidding, lipids next. Um, let me know if you have any questions, and we will see you next time.